Now, if you look at the LC3 uh, microarchitecture again for these signals, you will notice that the data path is now is sending out a few signals to the control unit. Okay. These signals will determine what will, will give information or inputs to the control unit about what the current instruction consists of. Okay. So, what is the value of the uh, bits 11 to 15 in the instruction register of the current instruction? What is the value of branch enable? What is the value of uh, the processor status uh, register? Okay. So, um, these are signals or what is the value of an interrupt? These are all uh, sig so other than the interrupt, which comes externally. Uh, these three are values. The, these three are signals. The IR, the BEN, and PSR. They come from the data path into the control. From the control, there are certain output signals. These are, as we talked about, the J bits, the CAND bits, and the IRD bits. Okay. Now, inside the control unit these input signals are used to predict the values or to determine the values of the j bit the con bits and the ird bit which is basically bits 39 to 48 in the control word okay so uh, the ir is ir 11 to 15 are the opcode bits psr uh, 15 is the 15th bit of the processor status register. And what this does is it indicates whether the current program is executing uh, with supervisor privileges or with user privileges. Okay. Uh, the branch enable is used to indicate whether or not a branch should be taken. Okay. Um, and INT is used to indicate that an interrupt is being uh, requested by an external device which has a higher priority and needs to be serviced. Okay. Uh, R is in order to indicate that the memory a memory operation is over. So, this has legacy reasons because R uh, is used uh, if you remember when we studied ROMs and RAMs R slash W bar is what is used to say that either you are reading or you are not reading. Okay. So, this is this R is to say that a memory operation has ended. The J, the CAND, and the IRD provide signals from the current micro instruction. Okay. Okay. Now, there is also an other entity called the control address register. So, what is the control address register or the CAR? The control address register is basically uh, just a place where you store the addresses of the control ROM. So, it is it's a uh, operation is uh, self explanatory just as the memory address register which addresses the locations inside the memory, the control address register addresses the locations inside the control ROM. Okay. Okay. Now, let us look at the format of every micro instruction that is stored inside the control ROM. Okay. So, as we said 0 to 38 are all controls uh, signals for data. What we will focus on is the bits between 39 and 48 in the micro instruction. So, bits between 39 and 48 are part of the micro sequencer. So, they determine what is the next stage of the system. So, this includes uh, bits 0 to 5 of j. Okay. So, uh, j bits are bit 0 to 5 and I mean uh, sorry uh, j bits are starting from bits uh, 39, 40, 41, 42 and 43 and, uh, and 44. These are all the j bits. The con bits are the next 3 bits and the IRD is the 48th bit. Okay. Okay. So, what happens if IRD is equal to 1? So, IRD equal to 1 is the control vector for state 32. So, if you remember uh, in your LC3 um, state diagram, state 32 is this state right here. Okay. The state where you determine 
which where you where, where you have to move next depending on what is the instruction being executed so if ird is a 1 it means you need to be in state 32 if ird is a 0 then it means you will be in any state other than state 32 okay so now if ird is a 1 then the next address will be 0 0 concatenated with ir 15 to 12 okay so the 3 bits uh, so 12 13 14 15 the 4 bits of ir 15 to 12 and then uh, they will be preceded by 0 0 okay so that's what happens if ird is equal to 1 so whenever ird is equal to 1 you assume that the next state address which is basically the j bits will be equivalent to ir uh, will be equivalent to 0 0 ir 15 ir 14 ir 13 ir 11 ir 12 this will be the sequence of j bits okay now if ird is equal to zero then uh, we get the branch address so if it's equal to zero it means it is not in state 32 which means you can get the branch address of j 0 to 5 from the control word okay so and for that purpose there is a separate piece of hardware which we will look at so in other words when ird is equal to 0 is when we will have to do additional computation if ird is equal to 1 then the next state is simple it's going to be the 0 0 followed by ir 15 to 12 when ird is equal to 0 then we have to determine what the next state is going to be and for that we are going to use the values of uh, cond as well as the input signals r b n int and i r 11 okay and we look at the circuitry that lets us compute the next state de depending on what is uh, the value of these signals okay now so uh, if you go back to the state diagram then this is this this slide tells you how every state requires at least one clock cycle but certain states could take longer than a clock cycle and which of these and and which are these these are the ones where you are trying to read from memory so if you look at uh, state 24 or uh, maybe state 25 uh, or uh, state 16 these are the states where you would require or state 33 these are the states where you would require more cycles okay now why why is that relevant because when you talk about a state you are always talking about it in terms of clock cycles okay so when you say what is the next state you actually mean what is going to happen in the next clock cycle so in states like 33 or uh, 25 or 20 uh, or, or, or 24 where you have to wait for these memory operations the next state would be the same as this state until the memory operation is completed okay so that's the reason why you need to know this fact that some of the states do not change with the clock cycles so in such a case we would just have quiescent states or wait states until we um, until we reach the condition where we can actually change state okay so let's look into that in a little more detail um, so for example if you have the execute phase of uh, the load instruction then let's see what happens so in state 2 which is this state uh, here right so uh, okay so in the execute phase of the load instruction let's look at what happens uh, as an example so in state 2 uh, the value of the memory address register is going to be pc plus sin x10 uh, this value okay a certain offset now from state 2 you always go to state 25 okay 
so if you look at your uh, lc3 state diagram okay so in the lc3 state diagram if you look at the load instruction then the load instruction goes all the way here it goes to state 2 and then from state 2 it goes to state 25 there's no condition there's nothing it's waiting for the minute it loads an address into mar it goes to mdr okay so and then depending on whether mdr has been loaded into the register uh, depending on whether the data has been loaded into the register mdr or not it stays in the same state which means r bar or it moves to the next state so at the time that the memory operation is complete it moves from 25 to 27 so if you have 2 you have 25 if r bar and 27 if r okay and then you have 18 so this is the sequence of the load instruction so when you look at this uh, example we are going from state 2 to state 25. So, how would you encode, uh, encode state 25 for the j bits? Uh, you would say 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So, the j bits need to reflect that the next state is going to be state 25. So, if this state is state 2, then that means the next state will be state 25. Understood? And, uh, and here, so look at the, if you look at the remaining signals, the IRD obviously needs to be a 0 uh, as we discussed earlier because it is only when IRD is 0 that we are actually going to consider the con bits or the input signals and uh, determine what is the next state using the J bits. Otherwise, it is predetermined. Okay. So, IRD is obviously 0. Now, the con bits for now uh, we have not yet looked at the table of the con bits, but I can tell you for the purpose of this slide for understanding this slide that 0, 0, 0 means that unconditional, means you do not have to check the con bits in order to know what is the next state that you are going to move to. Okay? So, let me repeat that. It means that if you are in state 2, you will always move to state 25 if IRD is equal to 0 irrespective of what the con bits are. This is the, the sentence that I just said now is encoded here between bits 39 to 48. Okay. Bits 39 to 44 show you the address of state, give you the number 25, which means the next state that you are going to go to is state 25. Bit 48 shows you that IRD is 0, so it is going to matter what you are doing with the rest of uh, cond and j bits. Bits 45 to 47 show you a 0, 0, 0, which is uh, the way to say that this operation or this movement to the next state is unconditional. There is no condition here that you need to wait for. Okay? So, this just is uh, magnifying this particular uh, point of the uh, state diagram where the load signal is moving from state 2 to uh, where the load instruction uh, results in a movement from state 2 to 25 and then 27. So, once we are in 25, now let us see what happens. 